My name is Yupari, and I'd like to invite you into my studio today to guide you along the development involved in creating this figure painting study using oil paint. And here we have our model for today, Daisha, and I'm going to keep an image of her to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as I develop the painting. I'm going to start off by getting a big brush apply some mineral spirits onto it and tone the surface very thinly with a, uh, a thin wash of raw umber. And I want this raw umber to help me out with the, uh, the drawing. Now the nice thing about applying a wash like this, a thin wash of raw umber or any kind of color that you'd want to use, is that this will start to settle into the surface so it'll start to uh, settle as the mineral spirit starts to evaporate or do its thing, whatever it does. It dries up in about 20 minutes or so. But in that 20 minute gap, you will be able to utilize the surface of the panel or the canvas, whatever you're working on, you'll be able to utilize this tone on the surface to act as sort of an eraser, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So this is what I mean by the uh, tone will help you out with the drawing. So I'm going to use an, a drawing brush, so this is going to be my drawing brush, and this is going to be my erasing brush. See how I can uh, push the paint around? And now I will say if you want to know exactly which materials that I'll be using for this video, that will be typed in the description box below. So in the bottom, just scroll down and you'll see the list of materials, including the uh, brands of paint and the brushes and all of that. So I'm going to start off uh, with the raw umber. And the palette that I'll be using today is zinc white, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, sap green, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. So it all started off with a single brush stroke. So we want to know the top and the bottom. So this is going to give us an idea of how the figure is going to fit very similarly to portraiture. If you've seen my portrait drawing videos, I usually start off uh, with two indications, one for the top and one for the bottom doesn't mean it's set in stone, it just means that's going to give me an idea of where everything is going to be placed. So just like we do with portraiture, let's think about the big picture. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with something that's sort of like a stick figure. So we have this large mass for the uh, from the head down to the waist, and we have a mass here for the hips. And then the legs come down somewhat like this. So let's think of the gesture of the pose. So this is the rhythm of the pose. So the head is kind of tilted down like this. The torso comes out like that. And the legs are out in this kind of shape. Now I know that the legs are in perspective. They're foreshortened. And we'll get more in depth with foreshortening later on. Well, let's just look at the big movements. This is how we want to start our figure painting. doesn't mean that everything is going to be in the exact place that I put it. It just means I'm getting an idea of where things are going to fit. So very loosely, I'm just going to make a little mass here now for the head. And then the shoulders, I'm going to say that there's an angle at a, about like this. So this is going to be the angle of the shoulders. And this is going to be the angle of the pelvis. Now let's think about the big dynamic shapes. So here's a big shape for the arm and the other arm. Very simple. And then here is the where the leg meets. So we have one shape here, one shape here. Just looking at the outside shape. Now proportion-wise, I'm looking at this top placement here in relation to the most uh, the bottom of this curve here that is the bottom of the hip point 1 point 2 point 3 would be right here on the feet the bottom of the feet so optically it looks like the distance from here to here 
is a little bit longer than the distance from here to here. So vertically, we're traveling further down here than we are from this point to this point. So I'm making these decisions optically just by looking at the model in front of me. So let's use our eraser brush. And you want to be loose with this. You really don't want to be timid with it. You want to work with big shapes and you want to work in such a way that you're free. You want to have fun with this. If you're trying to figure out how to push your painting to the next level or how to uh, become more of a, a realistic painter or whatever you're trying to do with painting, oftentimes it's about figuring out what is the most fun for you. Now for me, it's more fun to work with these large masses. See that? Now we have a little angle for the foot. It's more fun for me to look at the big picture and to work with these large shapes in a very careless kind of fashion almost. Kind of sloppy in the beginning, but it's fun. It's fun to push the paint around in this kind of way. A lot of fun to just move things around. So we have one big mass here for the torso. So this is mass number one. Mass number two for the legs, the shape of the thighs here. And then another mass, say mass number three for the legs. Now let's just look at the big shapes. Just the big shapes. So let's mass in some light and dark patterns. So here we have a big mass for the hair and a little bit of the shadow on the side. And here we have another mass for the dark of the top portion of the outfit that the figure is wearing. Very simple. And this comes over here. And then this large portion of dark for the bottom portion of the clothing comes down here. Very simple. Before I get too caught up in any kind of anatomical thinking, I really want to think about the big picture first. So there's a little bit of dark here, a little bit of dark here. And for the legs, there's a, I gotta squint my eyes. There's a shadow about here, coming down here. So all of this is in dark. So all of this is in dark. Just looking at big patterns of light and dark. The leg comes to about here, and it's also nice to continue a movement. So say that this is the corner of the leg. What happens if you continue that line? Where does it meet? This line here from the leg about kind of meets the arm. So here's the arm. And that is how you can relate from one angle to another angle. And the nice thing about oil paint is that it'll stay wet for a good while. So you'll be able to work in this fashion with large masses for a very long period of time, for hours at a time. Now I did say that the tone, this initial tone here, is going to start to settle. That is true. But even when this tone starts to settle, that oil paint, that oil paint will stay wet for a while. The entire day, you could work the entire day like this, just looking at these shapes. And the oil paint is very forgiving. It is so forgiving. It will stay put. It will stay there, allowing you to make big decisions even after, say, like, I don't know, two hours has passed. So let's work on the outside shape. And let's use the outside shape to build to the inside shapes. So let's look at the little negative shape here. So this probably comes down to about here, just optically. Now I could be entirely wrong uh, in the beginning and I should be as wrong as possible in the beginning. You wanna make the most mistakes in the beginning and you can stay in the beginning stage as long as you want. You can make mistakes for hours and hours and hours and hours and you have a lifetime to figure it out. If you will figure out your proportions. You will figure out where things need to fit. 
give yourself as much time in the simple stages of light and dark, simple masses, just rectangles and blobs. I don't care that it may look like uh, the drawing. It may look like the drawing is hopeless at this stage. It, I don't care about that. I just care about being honest with myself and keeping the shapes simple and easy for me to understand so that when the time comes that I'm going to add more information onto the picture, I will understand what information I have. So we have maybe like a little glimpse of the belly button there. Not entirely sure. Just trying to reason with all of the information presented in front of me. Simple masses of light and dark. So let's look at some of the light passages. So I'm going to use some paper towel. And we have just a simple light mass here. Simple light mass here. We're just working with simple masses. And a simple light mass here. And right about here we have another mass for the leg. Knee comes down to about here. If we follow through this shape, we get somewhat of an idea of where the arm is going to fit. So this shoulder comes out to about here. Give yourself plenty of room to make corrections. Something simple as that, I can move this to the left, I can move this to the right, so long as I have a simple shape that I can relate to the other simple shapes. So here's a little bit of light right here on the leg. So this is also called subtracting. So I'm subtracting some of the paint here to get the light. That's why I started off with the the white tone on the panel instead of uh, toning it with, say, oil paint and then letting it dry or something like that. Just started off like this with the white so that I can peel this off. We have a little light here for the, the head. Very simple. Now then, let's look at some of the inner shapes and let's look at some anatomical uh, pieces of information that should help us out. So right about here, we have uh, the midway point between the two clavicles. So this is the super sternal notch. So just imagine the bottom of your neck, it's the little center, that little, so this is your clavicle, one clavicle here, another clavicle there. These are your clavicles, also known as the collarbones. Now this is your neck. This point here, the suprasternal notch is right there. This is the suprasternal notch. And the two other points that I'm gonna look at here are going to be the two points to the left here and then to the right. So these are also referred to as the acromion processes. And let's just forget about the, the words. Let's forget about the fancy anatomical words. This is the corner of one shoulder, the corner of another shoulder, and the middle between the two shoulders. How about that? Let's just think about it like that. So they make an angle. See these two points? So between any two points lies a line. And that line, given where it is, has an angle in relation to the surrounding areas of the picture. So let's see, the angle is maybe like this, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm just gonna say that it's kind of angled in this way. So let's subtract a little bit on the side. So now that we know what the angle is like, let's look at another measurement. Now we're making these optically, so let's look at the center of the rib cage. So if this is the rib cage, so let's follow from this point, let's create a center line. Just like you would have a cylinder. Imagine this is a cylinder. Imagine the center line of the cylinder. See, this is the center of the cylinder. Here's the top of the cylinder, so it comes out like this. So we're thinking of the center line of the figure now. So this is going to give us the turn that the rib cage is making in relation to the pelvis. So let's see, the rib cage, let's imagine the rib cage. 
Let's draw it out. So if this is the rib cage, the rib cage is actually kind of turned this way. So the rib cage is turned in this kind of direction. Imagine that is the rib cage. Now we'll tell you, I'm not an anatomist. If I pronounce any of the anatomical words incorrectly, or if I say something anatomically that is completely false, please forgive me. I am a painter of shapes and light, and I love to learn about basically everything I can learn about. And so what I'm presenting to you is the information that exists in my head when I'm creating figure drawings or figure paintings. So here's the rib cage, turns around here, and here is the bottom of one rib, the bottom of the other rib. Now I'm just conceptualizing that. See that bottom of one rib here, bottom of another rib here. These are also known as the 12th ribs. Now, if that's not correct, let's just say that it's the bottom of the rib to the left of your panel, bottom of the rib to the right of your panel. Now let's continue the center line down here. See, we're kind of looking at the skeleton really. And so the center line turns a little bit more this way. And now the pelvis is at an angle like this. This is the angle of the pelvis. So let's subtract a little bit here. So let's try and get a little more clarity into these shapes. So you imagine the pelvis. So one point here, another point here. This is how I'm imagining the pelvis. It's just like a rectangular shape here. This is how I'm conceptualizing the pelvis. So one side of the pelvis is here, somewhere about here. The other side is somewhere about here. And now after standing back, I see that the outside shape may come out a little more like this. Somewhat like this. Meaning this has to come out a little further here now. So this comes out to about here. And also, guess what will follow your center line? The belly button. So we'll follow the center line. It'll be maybe about here. And of course, let's look at the light and dark shapes again. So if that is the if that is the uh, belly button, I'm going to subtract a little bit here. Just a little bit of paint here, just for a little some light for the belly button. And just looking at the shape alone. So here's the dark shape again of the clothing. Consider this a constructive process. We are constructing a figure. So I'm allowing myself the room and the time to make lots of mistakes in the, uh, say the mock-up phase. So this is like the mock-up of the, uh, say you're creating just like a simple architectural study of a building. So this is the simple architectural study that I'm making. And then more of the advanced material will be built on top of the knowledge obtained in this simple study. So just looking at these simple light and dark patterns. So I'm looking at just the shape here. So this is a little bit too big here. Either this comes down or this goes up. This probably goes up. A little bit there, just a little bit there. And now we have that this angle here, so this is angle one, two, and then a dark shape here. So I'm gonna relate this side to this side. So this comes at an angle like this, I'm gonna follow through to the other side and this comes at an angle more like that. So this angle is more like this. This angle on the other side is more like that, giving me more of a uh, kind of a rhythmic motion of angles. So the figure oftentimes you'll have an angle for the head that's like this. Then the neck is something maybe like this. So the angles in the figure are quite beautiful. They go like this, ang and angles like this, then like this, then like this, then maybe like this, then like this. So, for example, 
the legs. Let's look at the angle between these two legs. See this angle here? Now as we get further down, we're going to notice another angle that's in the other direction. So let's look at the corner of the leg. See that? This angle is now in another direction. So angle like this, angle like this. It kind of creates a sort of poetry. So look for poetry. Look for poetic rhythms in the figure. You'll find them. Now let's continue to figure out the drawing with color. So I'm going to be using a size 1 round brush and I'm going to create a false color which you can also kind of call uh, refer to as a drawing color. So this is going to be a flesh tone that I'm going to mix. It's going to be a little bit darker and a little bit warmer. And this is going to help me uh, continue the drawings the drawing shapes. So I'm going to draw some more specific shapes uh, with this color and I'm going to maintain the drawing color. So I'm going to maintain the brush that I used for the drawing color. And this is going to be, say, a drawing color for the light shapes. So then, let's start off with the most obvious light. So this one right here that we were talking about on the uh, belly button, and there's going to be a little light here. These are going to be little accents. Let's call them accents. And there's a little bit of light here. And uh, you may be wondering, well, what about the tone that you put on there? Isn't that going to affect colors? Uh, well, in a sense, yes, it will affect the colors. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the uh, raw umber mixing in with the colors that I used. Uh, because this is probably maybe going to be, say, 1.7% 1, 1. of raw umber. But then with all of this paint, I'm going to add the remaining percentage. So uh, let's make the math easier. So this is 1% of paint, and then the rest of the percent I'm going to add, it's going to be the remaining 99%. Let's look at it that way. But well, here's the shoulder. So let's see the angle that it makes comes up a little bit like this, then down like that. That's all it is, just a simple shape. Now there's a little bit of light on the neck, so there's a little bit of light here. And then the I'm going to bring back the drawing color. And this shadow actually goes further out like this. So optically, this shadow is coming out a little bit further. And this angle may actually come down a little bit. So say the center line of the head is like, it's about here, and then here we have the axes of the eyes, and a little ear over here. Let's say a nose will fit right there. So back in with the drawing color, I'm not going to worry too much about the portrait. I'm going to worry, or I'm going to focus, let's not worry about anything here. Let's just focus on the big shapes in relation to one another. How about that? So let's clear this here. So let's just level that light. Let's just unify everything here. Just one big shape of light here. You can always come back and add more information when you want to. So let's just cover a little bit more over here. And if it's starting to if it starts to look like a clay sculpture, that's good. That means you're thinking three dimensionally. A little more light over here. So what about the light on the arm? So I'm gonna actually put in some of some color for the background there. Everything we want to do with the oil paint, we want to do strategically. And most importantly, in a way that is fun, a way that we enjoy. And let's enjoy just messing around with the paint. Let's just be sloppy with it. In such a way 
Let's be sloppy in such a way that we're so sloppy that we are specific. So let's create this little shape here for the shoulder. And then this little shape here. Let's just cover. So I'm just going to cover this now. This is all to facilitate the drawing and to have fun while doing it. So just covering all of this now. While I'm doing this, every time I apply paint to the surface, not only am I trying to refine uh, the color, but I'm also trying to refine the shape. So this shoulder comes out a little bit further. And again, I'm making these decisions just optically. That comes out just a little bit further. This cuts in, this comes at an angle like that. And this cuts in just a little more over here. Let's look at the negative shape. See this little negative shape, this little triangle here? It's kind of poking out in that direction. The poetic array of shapes in the figure is something beyond the words that I can conjure up. The figure is beautiful. Figure painting, figure drawing is beautiful in the way that these shapes harmonize with one another. That's the wonders of figure painting and figure drawing. So I'm carving out a little shape here. I'm going to not worry if I carve a little too much or a little too little. If I lose some of her arm, so be it. I can always come right back in. Tell you what, let's come right back in with the flesh tone mixture and give her arm back. A little bit of light here, and there you go. Her arm came back. Who would have known? So a little bit more alizarin and crimson, some sap green. Those are my two colors of choice here. Just a lizard and crimson and sap green. And I will say, if you want to know exactly which materials I'm using, all of that information will be typed in the description box below. So let's draw some more. Let's put in a big shape here of light on the leg. Just paint. All this is is just paint. And then the same thing here. Let's just fill in that shape. And what we're doing is we're reasoning with the shapes. We're constructing with them. So let's fill in this little mass here. This comes out to about here. Let's just cover this whole thing with paint now. This whole shape. And over here, this leg is going over top here. Remember this angle we were talking about? This points out to about here. This gives us the foot. So we're thinking with paint. So I'm thinking the leg is about there. You can always do this. Look at one point related to another point here. So this point on the leg using a vertical gesture is a little bit further to the right. I'm going to come back in with the drawing color. I'm sorry, with the background color. I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue to that mixture. And this cuts in right there. So the legs are being foreshortened. So what does that mean? What does foreshortening mean? My brush, you're seeing it in full length. It is not foreshortened. I rotate it a little bit. Now, to you, it appears smaller. That is foreshortening. The way that something is turned in relation to you may make it appear like it's smaller. See how it looks like it's a smaller brush? And then, what? It's a bigger brush. That is what foreshortening does. So that's what's going on with the leg. So the leg optically looks like it's being truncated right here. But in fact, it's being foreshortened because of the angle that the leg is making in relation to me. So let's just cover a little bit more here. Now I'm still going to work with the uh, background color. 
the drawing color and that uh, flesh tone color. So I'm going to keep bouncing back between those two to further solidify uh, the simple light and dark patterns. So with the drawing color, I'm going to tint it with a little bit of, say, some yellow ochre. Why not? Let's tint it with a little bit of yellow ochre. Let's start to add a shadow color. Now, it's important to continue to uh, develop the light and shadow delineations as much as possible. We want the light and shadow shapes to be as accurate as we can possibly make them. Light and shadow, especially with the figure, is I'd say about 95% of the battle, really, in terms of trying to get the figure uh, to look like a figure on your surface. So adding a little bit more dark here. More, I'm also um, abstracting the shapes while I'm doing this. I'm thinking the shape is somewhat like this and comes out a little bit like this. So I'm thinking of the abstract shapes as I fill in these masses of light and dark. So this comes down to about here, something like that. And now over here, there's going to be a shadow. There's a little shadow here on the side of the belly button. So let's go ahead with that mixture we had before, just the raw umber and the yellow ochre. And let's place this shadow color right here. See how simple that is, just massing that in. Light and shadow, getting those two shapes as accurate as possible can give you a very convincing image from very far away. Very much like with portrait painting, if you've seen my portrait painting videos. So there is a little glimpse of light here on the bottom where the hand is located. So the hand is actually a little further down, maybe to about there, not entirely sure yet. But we're still thinking, and we will continue to think with the oil paint. So the hand may be there, or it may be a little bit higher, I don't know. But as long as I have the tools uh, to reason with the shapes, then we're good to go. This arm actually comes down like this. And then we have the hand coming out about there. Now with the background color, I'm going to add a little bit of ivory black into that. And I'm careful not to use straight black, so ivory black with some, maybe some raw umber. Now let's further uh, facilitate this shape here. So this comes out to about there. And maybe the leg. I have to close one eye, do a vertical gesture between the corner of something to this corner. So let's say, say this corner here of the shoulder. So if I relate this shape here to this shape here using a vertical gesture, this shape is not that far to the left. So that means that these this mass of the legs needs to come in a little bit more. So let's make that adjustment. So let's fill in this dark for the uh, seat that she's sitting on. Come back in with the shadow color. Let's push this a little bit further in like this. Again, just reasoning with the shapes. Push that in a little bit further. Then I'll go back to the dark brush. We have this comes a little further in like this. See that? Now I'm going to use the same color to delineate kind of where one leg goes over the other. Just a simple brush stroke, kind of to get an idea of where that comes over. And back to the flesh tone brush. Let's see, let's look at the two knees now. So one knee may be about there. The other knee may be about here. 
So there is an angle between these two knees here. Now let's pull this shape up here a little bit. Nice and simple. Now to the uh, shadow color, I'm going to fill in the rest of the masses of shadow. Then I'm going to add another value. So let's put in the shadow here on the side of the neck. So a value that I'm missing is this dark here. So let's just, with the same brush, add a little bit of ivory black. And maybe a little bit of lizard crimson. Let's sneak some warmth into that. So now I'm going to look for the darkest area. So if this is the belly button, then this shape here comes down to about here. Just looking at the shape. And now let's look at the corner. See, this comes to about here. So I'm looking for the shadow, basically, of the uh, dark of the clothing. So there's a little shadow here. It's fairly dark. It wraps around like this. Let's see, this comes to about here. Maybe, just maybe, this comes out here. Don't know yet, but the important thing is to keep these shapes understandable to you. I can understand some type of shape like that. You can too. So this comes out maybe a little further like this. This comes down here. Now, I'm not applying any more paint and just using what's on the panel to make a lighter value here. Now adding a little more paint to make it darker up here. We want the paint to work for us. You want to own the medium that you're using. Let it work for you. So the dark of the hair. See, so maybe it comes to about there. A little more ivory black. And some more Cadmium red, I mean some a lizard and crimson, sorry. There's a nice dark over here. Maybe it's cooler, so a little more a lizard, or sorry, getting them confused. A little more ultramarine blue right there. And there's a nice little dark accent for where the forehead exists. So let's make that angle here. So here's where the forehead exists. Comes down to about there. And the little angle that I'm talking about is this one here. The top of the forehead. Let's make some little brush strokes here to indicate some existence of hair or something up here. Now again with the dark over here. Now I'm going to go and do something with this arm, so I'm going to switch brushes. Adding a different brush now, I'm going to go back to the uh, shadow color that I had mixed before. Remember that was just the raw umber and the yellow ochre. So let's get this little shape here for the arm. Very simply. So I'm going to go in with the dark. See how you can construct with color? It's the beauty of oil paint. It stays wet for a while. It allows you to work like this. It allows you to be sloppy and then construct something out of the sloppiness. So here's the side of the arm. Now let's switch brushes to the flesh tone brush. A little bit of light here. And let's just draw out the uh, shape of the arm here. So it's like the bicep, and here we have the forearm. A little bit more white, and that same mixture that we had, lizard and crimson, sap green. A little bit more of the white. Light accent existing right there. Now back to the shadow brush. 
here's this little dark value here. And back to the light, a little bit more lizard and crimson, some sap green. Let's get this value in here. Let's add some more stuff to the background now. So I added a little bit more cobalt teal, so let's just mess around with this color. And so all I'm really thinking about is the value. So what value exists here? Well, this value, it's not as dark as this value, so that's where I'm starting off with that shape. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more ivory black and some uh, raw umber, a little bit of, say a touch of the alizarin crimson again. So let's bring this shape back in. And let's use some elements of the background uh, to help us continue to develop the figure. We want the figure to exist in some kind of space. So I'm gonna switch brushes to a clean brush and I'm actually gonna use a little bit of walnut oil to thin out the paint. So a little bit of walnut oil onto this mixture right here and a touch of the mineral spirits tell you what, uh, if you're going to use walnut oil to thin out the paint, apply just a touch of mineral spirits. And all I did was dip the brush into the mineral spirits after dipping into the walnut oil. So let's look at this shape. It comes out to about here. And then the arm comes out to about there. And then that's one straight line and that's another straight line. See how we're constructing an arm using the background color? Pretty neat to use the background to construct uh, shapes like an arm. Now using the brush that had the uh, shadow mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and just push this a little bit further out. I'm gonna switch back to that flesh tone brush. Again, we're using this color to help us draw. So there's actually a little bit of light here. And as I stand back, I see that maybe the shape of the head probably comes down a little bit further. Probably is the keyword. Now I'm gonna go back to that brush with the background mixture. So remember that beauty of uh, the shapes that I was talking about with the figure, how one shape curves and complements the curvature of another shape? Well, that happens with the arm. So here's one corner of the elbow. See the shape that it's making? The high point of this curve is higher than the high point of this curve, and I'll talk about that uh, as I paint that in there. So here's the high point of one curve of the arm, the high point of another curve of this arm, or of the uh, side of the arm, going to be a little bit lower so it's actually going to be there so it's going to create a beautiful asymmetry look for the asymmetry oftentimes things are too symmetrical and nature doesn't like symmetry it does not so let's look at the proportion of the arm here so i have to stand back so i may have described the curve there, but this angles off. This comes a little bit more like this. And I'm just looking at the negative shape. So negative shape would be like this blue shape here. Like what is the characteristic of this negative shape? It comes down a little bit further. Now let's do the same thing. So we have the shoulder coming out here. So that's one shape there. And let's not lose that angle that I was talking about before. This angle, this shoulder is a little bit lower. Shoulders can move independently of one another. So it's all right if this shoulder looks a little bit lower. Switching back to the flesh tone brush. Let's add this shape right here. And a little shape right here adding it in there as I see it. Now back to the shadow tone brush. So I think what's throwing me off with the portrait is that there's a little shadow here. 
though oftentimes uh, a challenge uh, with figure drawing or figure painting is the portrait. And so we kind of have to have a uh, conceptualized uh, image of what a portrait looks like to us within the figure so that we don't spend too much time focusing on the portrait. Now, what I mean by that is here's a little, here's going to be a little guesstimation of what the portrait will look like. Two eye sockets there and the bottom of the nose. It's a guesstimation of what the portrait is going to look like. And of course the forehead. Now after standing back, that guesstimation is, is all right, but the size of the head is in question. So the size of the head may be too small or maybe too large. Uh, so oftentimes people will use the head as a unit of measurement for the rest of the figure. So I'll explain what that means. So oftentimes people will do something like this. So say the head is about this long and repeat that distance down here. Uh, well, if the figure is facing you directly like this, then the distance from the head to the, uh, the top of the head to the bottom of the head is somewhat close to the bottom of the head, that is the chin, uh, to the chest. Now this head is tilted down, so it doesn't really follow that rule. So I'm not going to think about that measurement so much. I just wanted to introduce it to you. But rather, I'm going to think about these simple patterns in an abstract fashion. So I'm going to switch to, uh, say, ivory black and let's use sap green. And let's put in the dark that exists over here. So this actually comes down to about here. And we can use this to further draw out the shoulder. So I'll tell you what, there are, there are ways to approach figure drawing, say in a linear fashion, so working with pencil and paper, so working with graphite, and you're essentially doing the same thing that I'm doing here. I'm relating this shape to that shape, just like you would using straight lines and angles with a figure drawing. So I'm going to push this actually a little bit further out here. Keep things simple and easy for you to understand. So when the time comes to make corrections, say that that I was looking at this distance here, seeing that this needed to move. So when the time comes that corrections need to be made, such as moving the shape of the head a little bit this way, that those corrections can be done in a simple and easy and simple, easy and understandable fashion. That's where you want to be at. I'm sorry, that's where you want to be. You want to be at, in a place where you're enjoying constructing and composing with oil paint or with acrylic paint or with watercolor or whatever medium you're using. You want to enjoy the process. So let's just add this dark value here. And while we add this dark value here, Let's go ahead and add the light value that exists down here. So I'm going to go back to the cobalt teal and the yellow, or sorry, the zinc white, getting ahead of myself, and a tad bit of yellow ochre. And let's place some of the light that exists down here. So thinking about the environment can really help you uh, compose your figure paintings or your figure drawings using elements of the environment can really help. So this area is a little bit lighter over here and the model is sitting on a, a bench here so let's give the bench some legs. So to the raw umber and the cadmium red. Let's see, so one arm is here and then the bottom leg of this contraption is about here. So another leg is about there. Let's connect them together. 
Now let's see, another leg comes down to about here. And then the other is kind of cut in between the two legs. And now I notice that I may have too much distance out here for this uh, stool. So using the, uh, the paint that I used over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and push that. This is the beauty of oil paints. It lets us do these kind of things. It's very friendly. Now with the same brush and a little more uh, ultramarine blue, let's use some walnut oil and a little bit of mineral spirits. Let's just get the tone here for the platform that the model is on top of. So let's just etch that in there very fearlessly. Just cover that. See how we're going to get a sense of the environment in a very simple fashion. And don't worry, we'll come in here and we'll add some more information. So a little bit more of the blues. So I'm going to have to add more ultramarine blue. Let's just use what we have there for now and add this blue over here. And of course, there's a shadow underneath here. So I'm going to switch brushes. This one already had some dark, so let's just use that. Why not? Just to add this shadow here. Very simply. And then go back to the other brush. And add a little bit more blue here. Very simply. And now back again to the dark. Let's just use the rest of the ivory black. And a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson. Let's paint in this dark shape right there. So now that we have our big shapes of light and dark established on the torso and the rest of the figure, let's add some more uh, structure. So I'm going to analyze uh, two sections here. So I'm going to look at this shoulder here, the shape of this shoulder, and this shape. So I see that this shoulder here is receiving less light than this one. You see that it's a little bit darker here than it is over there. And we kind of have that indicated, but I think we might be able to go a little bit further. And at the same time, let's not lose this light and shadow delineation. So I'm going to use the same type of color combination that we used before. I think it was working, so I'll just keep using it again. So I'll just be using alizarin crimson and sap green maybe a touch of raw umber it's a very neutral color here could have a little bit of warmth maybe some cadmium orange it's a little little more warmth into this area And we have a definitive shape right here for the clavicle wrapping around here. Now the value as we get lower here gets a little bit lighter. So let's just raise that value just a little bit. And there's also a lighter plane here. The pectoral muscle is wrapping around here. So let's make that just a little bit lighter. You always wanna make sure that you stand back so that you can see what the picture looks like from a distance. And that's really what you want to uh, make the strongest. You wanna really make the, the way the picture looks from five feet away look better than it does say five inches away. So let's add a little plane differentiation here. So this plane here is the side plane of the shoulder. So it's getting a little bit darker over here as it curves into the pectoral muscle. Just a little bit darker over here. And we have the deltoid muscle down here. 
we have a little half tone being casted by the deltoid muscle over here wrapping into this section right here. And let's just think of this still as a series of shapes. You could be painting anything, whatever it is. You don't even have to know what you're painting. I can tell you, just analyze the shapes. So I'm just looking at this as a series of shapes. So let's make it a little bit darker over here. Let's get that little shape here. I was missing just like that maybe introduce this little dark foliage right here and then let's add a little bit more light right here so here we have the the super sternal notch is somewhere over here so remember that's just the bottom of the center of the neck where these neck muscles meet somewhere over here so it's a little bit darker over here so with a combination of just cadmium orange and a little bit of the zinc white i'm going to add the uh, highlight over here. So there's a lot of magic that happens when you have light and shadow, maybe two half tones, two or three half tones. So we have light and shadow, maybe two or three half tones, and then a highlight. Just that basic amount of information, the basic number of values, can really give you the illusion of the form from far away. And that's what we're trying to we're trying to perfect. It's actually a little bit more light right here. Now making these decisions by standing back very far away. So I'll make a brush stroke like that, and then I'll move back, and then I'll move a little bit forward again. So there's a little bit of light on the neck down here that's receiving a lot of light, and it looks a lot uh, cooler to me the hue so let's do that just added a little cobalt teal into that mixture just a little cooler and then with the alizarin I'm going to add just a tad bit more warmth in here just a little bit so now with the abdomen we have our basic light and shadow shapes. So let's just go ahead and flatten out the shadow a little bit more. So it's the same shadow mixture that we had before. Remember the raw umber and the yellow ochre, I believe. So just the same mixture. I'm just trying to uh, make the shadow a little less noisy. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to minimize the uh, the effect of the brush strokes. So let's make our shadows recede. So a way to do that is to kind of minimize the amount of like showiness to the brush strokes in the shadow. Let's leave brush strokes to show uh, more often in the light. So this shape might actually come a little further out here. Now remember I said before, light and shadow is most of the battle really for getting the overall image to read. So if anything, let's just make sure that our light and shadow is well differentiated. So now let's get into some of the planes for the abdomen. So we have, let's say, a side plane here, and you can kind of tell the shadow is turning into this shape here. So this is the abdomen right here so this is going to be another plane and this plane is going to be facing the light a little bit less so it's going to be a side plane 
just like we work with the face. Uh, say that, uh, like in the face, this is going to be like the side plane of the cheekbone or something like that. If you've seen my uh, portrait painting videos, it's kind of what this is analogous to. And then it wraps around to the side here. So I'm really thinking three dimensionally. So we have one plane here. That's one. And we have another plane here, two. And then the shadow side is another. So three. Those are three major planes, but within this plane is going to exist another plane. So that's where things can get a little tricky uh, with the figure. How do you deal with all of those plane changes, those large plane changes with smaller changes in between them? So here's how you do it, or here's one way to approach it. So first I made this whole thing one flat plane you see that's mostly just one flat plane, one flat half tone. And now that it's one flat half tone, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make another value change right in here. See that? Another value change. But I want to make sure that this value does not get confused with this value. So we're relating the values to one another. I want to create a value change here by making this plane lighter right here. But I don't want to lose the differentiation between this plane and that plane. That's going to be the key to getting the forms on the abdomen to turn. So I'm going to add a little bit more cadmium orange and a little more zinc white into this mixture. And let's get a little bit more of this plane. So let's bring this value a little bit higher up. So we really want to make sure that this area, this plane here does not get confused with this one. So it's kind of like, kind of like a, uh, like a ripple. So it goes up like this, inwards like this. So we have the side plane, say this is the oblique. Wrapping around here, and then we have the abdomen turns in here, and then turns out and goes back there. So I'm going to go back to the shadow brush. So notice I have a brush for the light and a brush for the shadow. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this shadow shape up a little bit further here. And the same thing over here those up just a little bit further. Now about this uh, transition here, this may look fairly dark, but it's still not in shadow. So I have to be careful not to make this value as dark as the shadow. We want, never want to lose our distinction between light and shadow. So I'm going to add just a little bit of the flesh tone and maybe a touch of alizarin so we can get a dark light. So I'm trying to get a little dark light here. And this dark light is going to describe the curvature of the light, the area in the light, just as it approaches the shadow. So that's really what's going to give us that volume, that curvature of the form. So let's apply that shape here now, just like that. Just takes a few touches. And maybe some more of the shadow color. I'm going to add a little bit more raw umber to it. And let's just get a little more depth into this area of the shadow. Let's just make it a little bit darker. So just a little more ivory black and touch of alizarin. Now I'm going to switch back to the light brush. So alizarin, crimson, yellow ochre. Let's try and get this light back. Very gently. Now I'm going to take the shadow color, and uh, now that we have these basic shapes for the legs, 
Now, there's a shadow that I omitted, a little shadow coming into here. So first thing I'm going to do is get uh, maybe a little bit of ivory black and some alizarin crimson and try and get the shape of this leg overlapping the other leg. So here is the front of the leg. And let's add a little bit of nuance to this curve. So there curves inwards here and then up again and I'm going to spin the brush to get a fine point and wraps over there. Just a little bit of nuance to the to the curve just so it doesn't look like a uh, straight cylinder. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing down here. So rather than have it looking like it, it's good to start off with a cylinder for the legs. So we have a kind of foreshortened cylinder here. Uh, but let's just add a little bit of nuance. So let's say maybe this wraps in more, comes out here, curves back in here, and then flattens out over there. Just a little nuance. So let's add a little bit of a lizard and crimson and uh, some cobalt teal into our shadow color. And let's start to create this shadow that's being casted uh, from the leg to the left of your screen to the leg on the right of your screen. So I'm going to apply the brush strokes in this kind of direction. And that's mainly just to cut back on the glare. Let's also preserve that little dark accent between the two legs. So let's just cover this little area now to get the shape of the shadow being casted from one leg to the other. So it's following the form of the leg here. So it's actually going to curve a little bit into here. Let's make sure that the shadow is following this form. And then of course all of this is going to get darker. Just like that, very simply. Let's push this shape down a little further. Maybe this shape goes up over here. Let's add a little bit of cadmium red into this color. Then let's use this to create a dark light. A dark light here. The value just before the light starts to reach the shadow. Again, that's the value that's going to uh, create curvature for the form. And it might be a little cooler over here, so maybe some cobalt teal. Add some cobalt teal to that mixture. Very simply. And now for this shadow, I see that the shape might be coming up a little bit further like this. So this shape might be protruding forward to the left. Like that. And then this shape might be curving in. So let's make sure we describe the way that sh shape is turning. And I don't see it in the uh, image, but I'm going to add a little bit of warmth into that shadow. So a little bit of cadmium red. I just feel like some warmth from this leg would be reflecting onto here. Though I can't see it on the image, I think that that would exist in nature. So I'm going to add just a little bit of warmth in here. Hopefully that'll show that this leg is wrapping over this leg by adding that warmth into the shadow. Let's make it even warmer near this corner here. Why not? Now I'm going to add some of the alizarin crimson and a tad bit of the flesh tone mixture to create another dark light for this shape here. And then maybe a little bit of the the background mixture to create a cooler dark light. 
a little more on the gray side for this area right here. And then of course we're going to have a little highlight there. So the white and let's say the cadmium orange and a tad bit of zinc white. Just a little touch of light here. So with the with the form, again, I'm trying to use as little bits of information as possible uh, to describe as much as I possibly can. So what that means is I'm trying to have an economy of means, meaning you can count them light and shadow, two, dark light, that's three, highlight, that's four, four values, just four to give me the uh, volume of this leg. And I want it to read at a distance. I want it to read its best at a distance. But the closer you get to it, the more you'll see, oh, it's just four values. How can that possibly work? So let's look at the basic shape for the foot. Uh, so there is a line right here. So there's a shape right there. Cuts in like this. Comes in about like that. And goes out like that. And let's leave this little dark shape here. Uh, just for the uh, the effect of a shadow. But there's still a little light underneath. So here's the heel of the foot. A little bit of light is showing there. Oftentimes a single brush stroke can serve so many purposes. So now I'm going to get some uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of raw umber. And let's Put a little accent. So the accent is when one form meets another form. That is, the form of the foot is meeting the form on uh, this piece of blue, whatever it is, carpet, model stand, whatever you want to call it. This foot is resting on top of this. So without the accent, it'll look like it's floating. So let's put the accent. See that? This wraps around down here. And now, hopefully, the foot will look like it's on something, like it's resting on something. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit of light, so a lighter plane here for where the toes are, are existing. A little lighter over here, perhaps around here to the pinky toe. And then we have this plane right here. So just a little basic shape like that, from a distance hopefully will read as a foot. Now with that brush that I used for the accent, I'm going to place just a single uh, brush stroke right here, a little dark shape right there, then I'm going to go back to the flesh tone, and I'm going to add just a little touch here to get the effect of the one toe that we see. Just one brush stroke. Let's try and keep it as simplistic as possible. And then let's show some evidence up here of the leg turning in here. So her foot is actually kind of turned this way. Notice that the foot is turning independently of the leg, so we can kind of turn our feet inwards like that. So let's just add a little dark shape right here, just so that it looks like the foot is turning. And now for the toes. The toes are kind of tricky, uh, especially with a figure painting that is very small. So what I would usually look for is the big toe. Make a little brush stroke for the big toe. And then just scumble some stuff. Not counting the toes or anything, just scumbling a little bit uh, for the rest of the toes. And then with the light brush, I'm going to add the lightest light. So we have light, 
we have shadow, cast shadow, that's about three values, and then the accent, four values, so let's just add this little extra bit of light here. So let's follow this form here with the light. Goes up like this. This goes around about like that. Very simplistic. Then with the background brush, I'm going to cut right back into here. And that will hopefully read as a foot from a distance. Now with the portrait, I'm going to go back into the shadow color. And uh, I know I have some shapes for the uh, indications of the features, uh, but I think that this shape might actually cut in a little bit more than what I had. So the portrait, especially within a figure painting or a figure drawing, it's kind of an elusive thing. Oftentimes artists leave it out, uh, leave it like a kind of, uh, just like a color mass. Uh, oftentimes that works and that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, but I, I just have a, I don't know, a tendency to really focus on the portrait uh, within the figure. So I'm, I'm telling you my own tendency is to overanalyze the portrait within a figure painting or a figure drawing. And now if you're working on a commission portrait or something like that that's full figured, uh, then you're definitely going to have to do that. So you're definitely going to have to uh, think a great deal about the portrait. Uh, but in a study like this, so you're uh, with a group of friends or you're at a, at a life drawing group or anything like that, and then you you find yourself in this position where you're trying to study the forms of the figure, but oh wait, there's a portrait involved. Now what? And the trick is really uh, to think about the portrait the same as you would think about the forms on the figure. So that is just look for the light and shadow, just these light and shadow shapes, such as uh, what we're doing right now. Just look for the light and shadow shapes. Have maybe like one half tone, say like this half tone for the nose, and then like a few highlights. And that can be it. That can say so much if you just get the light and shadow correct. And a few half tones. So let's do that. Let's add another half tone. Just a light and shadow, a few half tones, and then a highlight here and there. Now don't use the word recipe. That's like a recipe to uh, get a portrait to fit uh, within the construct of a figure, at least in this kind of study. So let's add this little half tone here. I added a lizard and crimson, might be too much. So let's go back to sap green. Again, my two favorite colors to mix. So let's add a little more green, a little more depth into this. I'm switching back to the uh, light brush. So let's pick up some of the color from here. Try and get a fine point on this brush. Let's really dig the bristles into this. Try and get a nice fine edge of paint. I like to use my pinky to rest on the uh, the surface, so let's see, just a few little touches of light, and that didn't work, and that's all good. So I'm going to add a little bit of the zinc white, some raw umber, I think I just needed more paint. Let's take some more paint. Just want to have a little touch of light here. Very simple. Now that might be reading as too much, so I'm going to take some of this color here, and then I'm going to take some out, take some of that ultra bright out. And now I'm going to use the same 
light to add the light right here on the forehead. Just a little glimpse of light. See that? Light and shadow, half tone, and then just a few touches of light. Uh, that is a few little highlights. We don't want them everywhere. You don't want to put highlights everywhere. Just in the most important areas that you can think of. And that for me right there is this area of the forehead. So I'm missing another half tone. That half tone is the dark light. So let's just mix a little value on here. So there's a dark light here. Just as the light starts to turn into the shadow. So with a very light touch, doesn't take much. Take a little bit of light and add it here. And then maybe another half tone. See, look at that. I get caught up with the portrait. I purposefully tried to stay away from the portrait and tried to focus more on this area. I just find myself just wanting to paint further and further into the portrait. So now let's look at the hair. So let's think with paint. So I'm gonna get the uh, light brush. I'm gonna go into this background color and uh, I'm gonna just draw out the uh, shape of the hair. So this comes out here. So I'm drawing in the outside shape. A little bit of an outside shape here. So we can think with paint in this kind of way. See that? Adding a little bit of light here made the dark value for the hair evident. So let's use some cobalt teal, a little bit of ivory black, a tad bit of the zinc white. Let's add some of the light planes on the, uh, the clothing. So I used ivory black just to get a little bit more of a neutral blue. And I think I need a little more of it, so a little more ivory black. Think of ivory black as a very dark and neutral blue. All right, so let's see. So I want this value to be lighter than this value, but I don't want the color to be as blue as this. And the value still might be too light. So a tad bit more ivory black. And that's about kind of where I want it. So we have some light here. And it's coming all the way up here. And this gets a little further out here. So we have some uh, glimpses of light here. A little bit more of that. So we have some light down here. Let's add this light plane up here, very simply. And let's let the light disperse down here. That's for the clothing. Now let's get some of this dark down here. Just a little of this dark. So let's add that dark over here. There's a dark shape here, so we're gonna add the dark. Then on the other side, this continues. And it's a little bit darker over here. And it gets much darker as the rib cage wraps around. So even though it's fairly dark, uh, the rib cage here is still turning away from the light. So this area should be getting darker. So that's gonna help us get a little more form. And the same kind of thing will happen over here. It's going to be much darker. And on the other side, right here, much darker. With a few glimpses of light right here. 
Let's pick up some more of this color. Just a few little touches of light. One there, and maybe one here. Let's just uh, blend this into here. And let's just push a little bit more of the light over here. It wouldn't feel right if this area wasn't light because we have so much light here. It wouldn't make sense if this, this wasn't light. And with that, that just about wraps up this figure painting demonstration. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video helps you out. And I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And I'll see you on the next video.